So, so uh, an example of this, uh, there's a new hospital here in Stockholm called NKS. Yes. And, and they built it without curtains. Because uh, someone felt that you know you should be open, open communication between the staff and the patients inside the hospital and the passersby on the street, and then they realized well, after it was built that yeah maybe it wasn't such a good idea. Yep. So so um, um, the curtains had to be installed at a very big cost. That is a typical example of, you and I come from the same background in IT, where the project manager and the sponsors have one idea, and then when you come down and drip down to the implementation, you realize there's something different. So, and again, again, business here need to think about and have what I reflected earlier, the integrity analysis as part of your due diligence before you introduce a service to understand this sort of characteristics and these questions. Uh, one thing is the consent mm. that is rather obvious mm -hmm. we have all got, gotten those letters yeah but what about design for privacy do the companies cover that topic yet i think it's hard to tell actually because you see some parts that works rather well and you see parts that doesn't work at all and then you have those who thinks it's going to be in one way and the data inspection and thinks it should be in another way because it's quite a lot of uncertainness in that area. So if you have a customer, mm. a client, and they want to do something new, how can you assure that you're designed for privacy as a product manager? Because that's yeah, I, I have to talk to the entire chain again because it's a different. It's from a different point of view. And uh, you take the data and you look at it and then you realize, okay, this is going to be used for that and that and that. You document it. And if it's going to be used for a different purpose, you have to document it and go through it again and see, do we need new more uh, appliances? Does, does the customer need to be attended again? Uh, you have to verify all the, the chain that goes from, from back from the start again as you have a new purpose. So privacy by design, yep. is this a new concept? Actually it isn't. It's something that was pioneered by the Information Commissioner in Canada for many, many years ago. And in fact it was the um, finance and insurance business in the United States and Canada that required some kind of framework for managing access to uh, sensitive and personal information. So um, a well-known figure called Anna Chivrakin uh, took a doctorate on this subject and then published some guidelines and policies and uh, principles for privacy by design. So it's not new at all. However, it's not very well known. Do we have the formal responsible as a product manager or is it something that is you should do but not well actually as a project manager you don't have the formal parts of it but you have the ob and to my point of view you have to have the obligation to talk to the owner of the data what we are going to do do with the data and if we have to ha if we're going to have another purpose of it then we have to talk again and verify that it is okay. But it, you can never, as the project manager, own the data. So it's, it's the business owner that have the, the ownership of the data. And we, as the project managers, have to have tight conversation with the business owner to ensure that the purpose of what we are doing with the data is, has also been discovered and documented. So, so, 
a few hobby horses I have around data protection and privacy protection is that, that for instance, you need to have master data management uh, in the sense that you need to have a master of where the data is. So, so you know which systems contain which data. So from a GDPR perspective, if you get a, a um, request for personal data, well, if you don't have, if you don't know where, where it is, how can you fulfill the request? Uh, so knowing where your data is, uh, and, and you need the system support for that. Uh, uh, another thing that you need according to GDPR is that you need to have, you need to know who has access, uh, you have to specifically give access, uh, monitor the access, revoke the access. So this means that you need to have a very good system for identity and access management. But most people think, well, we have log on, but you know, that's not really enough. It's not good enough. enough. It's not good enough. So you need to have that. You said that companies are thinking more about privacy. Are they still using the old car approach, no safety belts? Uh, I would say, quoting uh, Phantom of the Opera, that most of the security there is a disaster beyond your imagination. And that's due to the fact that even if they are looking at privacy by design, and that's a good thing, they are privacy by design is what they have to do going forward. They have a lot of old systems. But the challenge is normally not the old systems. Old systems can, to some extent, be managed. The problem is actually that they have old competence and old way of working when it comes to security. Uh, we have quite an interesting example just recently with Visma, uh, an attack that we saw a report uh, that was sent out, explaining in tremendous interesting details on how the first machine was hacked. And then in a few lines, there might be more, but the report that I read, there was only a few lines. And then they installed Mimikatz and moved on to the company. That means that they have targeted what we call credential theft. So they actually steal an account on your computer and use that to start moving around. Sooner or later, get the domain admin or root access and owns the whole company, owns the whole domain, all security <coughs> functions, and can manipulate those. Meaning that, yes, in this case, they, if the PKI system were guarded by this active directory or whatever, that might have been compromised if they got access to the private key. Depends on how they secured that. And I don't know the inner workings there. So after Essen saying no information had been stolen, okay, good. Then they hopefully have better protection. Well, actually, it, uh, I think that one basic uh, requirement from why they looked into this GDPR made this law is that we should we should not store so much that we really don't need. Uh, be, some customers have stored a lot of information. I can just talk about sales systems, which usually stores everything from if you are in a golf club or whatever you are. Uh, it's not essential to have that kind of data and that information to be able to do your job or to be able to do the process. So it's, I think it's essential to think through what is it that you really need to do what you should do. So you just don't have a, a lot of data that is not essential to the task in the system. We should strip it up. So why is privacy by design in such a hype now? Because privacy is increasingly important on the management agenda. Uh, we are seeing at an alarming rate more and more breaches of data uh, where companies have been irresponsible how they've managed the data. And it goes back to the fact that it's not just about security controls, it's about how you actually uh, decide what data you're processing, how you process the data, what is the legal basis for processing the data. And you think about these issues during the architecture and design of the solution, not by just um, adding security controls after the fact. It doesn't really help. So this is something that is increasingly important, and as I mentioned before, uh, there are principles 
on which you can base your design for a solution which will follow uh, privacy by design. In fact, there are courses you can attend at university and at colleges, but these are extremely expensive. So uh, some companies say that we need this data in order to do our business. Could be so, yeah. yeah but is that a reason that is good enough? Well, you have to show why you need it. Or actually, you have to be able to show why you need it. Because uh, as a customer, you should not have everything in your sales system. Uh, I don't maybe want to have my golf club engagement or my riding club engagement in the customer's uh, data system because it's not relevant for what we do there. So I think it's essential that we have to strip it off and think about why do we need this data? Is it essential to have? Is it a good thing to have? And what does it give us back? Do we really need it? And this is a hard question, I guess, in the yes, discussion. Yes, definitely, because it's quite a habit to select and collect. I want every data that you have. I want everything about this. And uh, that's quite a common way of thinking. But now I have to think a little bit different. Why do I need this? I need this and this and this to be able to do what I'm going to do. But I don't need the other stuff. Let's get rid of it. I would uh, take an example from the film business. When we're doing interviews, documentaries, we may have sensitive information according to GDPR. How should I design a system that handles privacy by design today? The first thing I would do, uh, there, there are a number of core pillars, but let me focus on two of them. Uh, the first one is the information architecture. Actually question what type of information do I need? And, but looking at it, not from the angle, what type of information do I need, but what type of information am I allowed to store in the first place? There could be different reasons depending on what type of documentary you're looking at. But looking at what type of information am I allowed to store, and then taking the angle, what do I actually need? And make sure that there isn't a mismatch of those. So you're actually allowed to store the information you need. And in case you are not normally allowed, because it's a bit more sensitive information, what type of permits do I need to do this? That so would, that's the legal. That's, that, that's the legal. legal part. That's correct. Yeah. So it's the legal part what you're allowed to do, and that is what DPOs has concentrated on today. Yes, mm. and, and and that's all well and good. Uh, but, then, then comes the reality, and the core concept is that there are there are many levels of security, but there are three large levels of security where you need to focus nowadays. One is, of course, the physical security. The physical security of the machines you're using. It might be mobiles, it might be cameras, it might be your uh, servers and everything. Everywhere where you store the information in one way or another. That, that's so you know who, who has physical access. Second part is the network access. Why is privacy by design to think about it from the beginning? Why can't you do it afterwards? Well, that's the wrong approach. Uh, again, people confuse privacy with Security is not the same thing. Uh, you can have uh, security without privacy, but you can't have privacy without security. Mm -hmm. So this is a really, really strange concept for many people to understand. And just building in security controls without understanding the purpose and the legal basis for processing, for example, and that you minimize the risk of data loss and this kind of thing is, as I said, increasingly important. We see almost on a daily basis now major breaches where personal information is exposed and people's lives are affected. And no security controls will help that if you're not thinking about how to control access to personal information. The other thing is that security focuses on managing risk from an organizational perspective whereas privacy focuses on the rights 
of the individual. And sometimes companies get this completely wrong. They focus too much on security and they don't consider the rights of the individual. And of course, that's why we're seeing regulations being introduced now globally, uh, which address issues with privacy. If I film you, this goes up to the cloud mm -hmm. and it's stored with my credentials. Yeah. So now we have two aspects of the identity. We have my identity, my information, because that's what we'll capitalize on in this case. The other part is your credentials that you use to access the information using different types of security controls. And here comes a big challenge. When we look at identity in the first place, we have the definition of identity. What, and the definition of the identity is mainly everything that's needed for a system to verify that you are you. And when the system, it could be an armed guard, it could be a technical system, it could be some type of log, whatever. So normally an identity only consists of your username, like email address and a simple password. So, and in some cases it should be better. Normally it should be a lot better. But that's a definition of the identity. Second part there is the identity system. You need to be able to trust the identity system. Because if it, the identity system doesn't fulfill its uh, obligations to verify your identity, like for example with pass a hash attack, then the identity system doesn't fulfill that function anymore. Then you can't, from that point of view, trust that system without mitigating controls. And then comes this third part, and that's the underlying infrastructure. Could you trust that? For example, with pass a hash mechanism. So what actually happens if someone takes control of your computer, and some type of laptop that happened in the Visma case, then use Mimikatz to extract, to extract the hash and use that to authenticate into Active Directory. Sooner or later, uh, get a domain admin. So the function that you should do is to, for example, when can domain admin, making sure that you have a secured workstation where you only do your domain admin tasks. You should make use of a credential guard or any other way of securely storing uh, the hash. So that's a pillar where we have the identity identity system and securing of the identity system. There are so many companies that fails this today. You see it in at least 11 attacks of 10. So I, identity and access management and then the first thing that almost no companies have is data exfiltration prevention. So data exfiltration prevention is a system that protects all endpoints and detects suspicious and, and malicious uh, behavior and, and stops it through different means. Let's pick up on your points. Uh, let's start from the last one. Uh, the law actually, GDPR has something called the data impact assessment, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. You're supposed to test your vulnerabilities, you're supposed to challenge where the, 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 the different kind of sort of streams and processes are in place. Going backwards on your master data, it's an interesting topic that GDPR actually has a very high requirement that, don't, that not many people have understood. What's the progress for the companies? You uh, said that it's even worse than you can imagine. They are getting there. I would say the bigger challenge right now is that they haven't changed their procurement uh, part. So they, they change the legal parts in the, uh, when they sign a contract. But there are so many ways to circumvent it to say that they actually work with privacy without actually doing it. I mm. uh, saw a contract just a few days ago that contain what's absolutely perfect GDPR compliant with absolute no ways to actually verify it when it comes to production. And the customer that bought the service actually wasn't able, they didn't have the competence to do it. So that's one thing that needs to be included. And it goes with all type of securities. You have the legal binding contract, you have these things that are stated to be said. And then logging, 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 